oftentimes when you take over a program, it's a rebuilding situation. Uh, in this case, you're taking over a program like Washington that was in the college football playoff that's won six national championships since 2009. Mm -hmm. And recruiting-wise, has been at the top of the rankings for a long, long time. Roster-wise, how unique is that to step into a situation where you're taking over a program that's on top yeah. and not at the bottom trying to build it? It's really unique. Um, it's the first time in a long time I've been a part of that. Um, the only thing I can really equate it to would be taking over at the University of Falls uh, where we went to the playoffs and uh, the year before I was the coordinator at the time. So that transition was pretty smooth there. Um, but a lot of times when you, you've come in, it's a, it's a losing record uh, that you're kind of taking mm -hmm. over for. So um, it has been unique. Um, it's been awesome, uh, you know, kind of coming into a, uh, culture mm -hmm. and and just trying to add to it and bring a, a piece of what you know the pieces of what I would like it to be um, but a lot of the foundation uh, the discipline the work ethic um, the expectations uh, a lot of that was in place and so you know you're really focused on continuing to add you know with the roster mm -hmm. and staff uh, to, to, to to get to where we need to be and and fill the holes as needed You've been on the job three months, your 13 practices in the spring. So, I mean, obviously it's your program, mm -hmm. but you hit the ground running so fast. Does it, does it feel like your program? Now, have you been here long enough and established enough with your coaching staff and your culture that it feels like this is Kalen DeVore's football program? Yeah, yeah, the day to day, um, just the, you know, every day we're getting the, just the processes down, mm -hmm. uh, refining them, um, the communication, uh, just, you know, everything's just happening in a, in a better way and it's it's a combination of the staff we retained the staff that I brought in um, and I love how our staff has been open to you know doing things differently than how maybe they had done them um, but also just the whole focus on it being better you know better for our guys better for you know just everything moving forward so it's been it's been awesome I feel feel really good about the direction that we're all headed right now I've been around coaches my whole life as a sportscaster. They always tell me coaching's coaching, whether it's high school or the highest level. But Coach Oates talks a lot about when he got here, six, he was six years removed from being a high school coach. Uh, now it's 11. You're eight years removed from being the offensive coordinator at Eastern Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, is, it, is it really the same at every level? Is coaching at Alabama the same as coaching at Sioux Falls or coaching as an assistant at Eastern Michigan? Or is yeah. it different? Uh, I think the day-to-day -day, um, duties are certainly different as, from a head coach to let's go Sioux Falls mm -hmm. or even Fresno, Fresno State. But um, I think that when it really comes down to the main thing, mm -hmm. uh, coaching is still coaching. Um, you know, football, uh, the X's and O's, <clears throat> the concepts are, are really the same. Um, the window dressing, the details, uh, it might, you know, a lot of that depends on the, the amount of quality control coaches you have, mm -hmm. you know, and... Um, just the details and the drawings and things like that mm -hmm. that you might do in your installs. I mean, those are the things in the areas where you just, with a little extra support, might uh, might be able to be a little bit more detailed. Um, but I think as far as what you're trying to teach, uh, what you're trying to be as a team, um, all those core values, those non-negotiables in the program, um, I really feel like they're they're very consistent, the same. Um, the pyramid of the pyramid I use that lay, lays out what I want us to be is about 95 percent the same pyramid um, that it was you know 15 20 years ago following coach Saban somebody had to do it it's you I've talked to some people that know you and they say he's so comfortable in his own skin and he respects coach Saban wants mm -hmm. to lean on him when he needs to but that ability to be you and not feel the need to try to follow what was done here in the past but to be your own man and your own coach mm -hmm. how important is that yeah, I think for me, it's just about um, being in this moment and impacting this program, these guys, uh, enjoying everything that revolves around uh, the fan base, mm -hmm. um, just trying to make the biggest impact that I can in a positive way, uh, you know, here at Alabama. So um, that means that uh, all the history that surrounds this program, mm -hmm. the alumni, Coach Saban, the great other great coaches that have been here over many years, uh, man, that's what it's all about, you know. Um, you know, I think about who wouldn't want to be in my shoes, you know, and that's a blessing. And that's, that's, it's, uh, it's something I'll take lightly. And, uh, you know, there's great expectations. And I think of that as also something too. It's just, uh, the expectations are, they're going to be there, uh, no matter where I'm at, mm -hmm. you know, those expectations and I'm going to be the hardest critic mm -hmm. on myself, uh, m more than anyone else. And so 
Uh, it's just been awesome being here. Uh, this program's got the bones of just championship mm -hmm. feel. You can walk in the building and it doesn't take long to have that have that vibe. Mm -hmm. uh, and now it's just a matter of leading and uh, making it ours and doing it the way we want to do it. You were really building something special at the University of Washington and you said you weren't looking to leave. Yeah. Um, I mentioned taking over the program here and it being at the top. You left a strong program, mm -hmm. one that was playing for the national championship. Yeah. How good did that feel to leave Washington? Jed Fish gets to now benefit yeah. from that, to leave a program that, that was that healthy, that really when you got there, you had to build it up in a short period of time. Yeah, I, I'm super proud of what we accomplished there in two years at Washington. And it would never have been done without great support there, mm -hmm. uh, administrative support, um, staff, um, you know, and the fan base was unreal, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I'm, my family and I are, you know, never for going to forget the great times and the mm -hmm. way we were accepted there in the Seattle community. Um, but, you know, I think having the opportunity to come here and again, I think this was, uh, you know, I don't want to say once in a lifetime, but I think this was an opportunity mm -hmm. that was just, you know, the one that you, you, you got to, you got to really seriously look at. And, um, uh, being here um, has not disappointed one bit. It's been just an amazing time uh, three months in and I can see what word can become uh, and I'm I can't wait to, to continue to take those steps to, to get the championships and do it you know do it how I've done it at different places uh, with this staff and with this team. You're a head coach but you're an offensive guy. I, I want to ask you about the quarterbacks because obviously you've got a mm -hmm. Jalen Milrose a, a did a great job last year. You inherited a starting quarterback, yeah. but you've got Ty Simpson behind him yeah. who's very talented. You got yeah. Lonergan, you brought in Austin Mack. Yeah. How do you, understanding and respecting that he's the starter, but keep those other quarterbacks engaged? Is yeah. there a quarterback competition? Do they know that he is going to be the starter in the fall? Mm -hmm. What have you told them? Is there going to be a competition coming out of spring that continues into fall camp, or is Jalen Milrow etched in yeah. stone as a starting quarterback? Yeah, Jalen's uh, taken all his reps with the ones and uh, there's been guys that take reps with the ones mm -hmm. just because we're trying to divvy up a practice day and reps uh, amongst all of them um, but that room is so talented mm -hmm. and you know uh, there's a lot of guys that got some some starts on uh, that are going to be under their belt mm -hmm. here uh, before it's all said and done you know when they finish their careers here and so uh, I'm excited about the growth I'm excited about the competitiveness they're all amazing mm -hmm. just great people and um, they all have the potential to be like, really good football players. And um, you can see the growth that they have each and every day. Um, they're competitive amongst themselves, but they also understand the team is first and foremost. Coach, I want to ask you about the playoff. You got into the 14 playoff. Obviously, the expectation here is to be in the playoff every year, but now it is expanded mm -hmm. to 12 teams. Do you like that? Yeah, I think so. I think it gives uh, those teams that, you know, really – are right on the fringe and maybe had one loss uh, where there was an injury or anything like that earlier in the season. Um, it gives them a chance to, you know, to, to, to go make a run at a championship. And I think um, this last year uh, there were multiple teams that could have done exactly that. And, uh, um, you know, I've been a part of playoff, the playoff uh, field, um, you know, a plate field of 16. Um, it's a special time. It's a special time for the fan base. It's a special time for the players. Um, the, the feeling and vibes that you have when you're getting ready for a week and it's a do or die situation uh, that's going to happen on Saturday, um, it's, it's, uh, it's intense, you know. Uh, and I think there's a certain makeup of people that thrive in that mm -hmm. moment and some that either try to do too much or just lock up. Um, I've seen it all and uh, really looking forward to the playoff style and, and what's to come there. When you took the job, the critics, they said, yeah, he's a good football coach, but this is a different world in recruiting. Even though you'd been in the Big Ten too, mm -hmm. it's gonna eat him alive. Saw what happened to Brian Harson at Auburn. That hasn't been the case. Mm -hmm. uh, you've recruited well, yeah. you've had a lot of the top prospects. I told people it doesn't look, recruiting under Kalen DeBoer doesn't look a lot different than it did under Nick Saban. I know that's not what you're concerned with in terms yeah. of the critics, but recruiting, I guess, is recruiting at the end of the day. Yeah, I think it's all about building relationships and trust and, uh, you know, having <clears throat> these young men that are coming to our program feel great about their, their development, their growth, and uh, the parents feeling good about how their sons are going to be treated, you know. And uh, um, this program, uh, you know, has got all the resources for these guys to be great. And coming in, and um, you know, I get it. It's intense down here. It's competitive. Uh, there's a lot of schools that are very close mm -hmm. to each other. Um, but, you know, I have a staff around me that I really um, feel has many of those same priorities in place with building relationships. They're intense uh, when it comes to evaluation and um, their intense on intensity on mm -hmm. how they want to build these relationships. It's important to them and they get it. 
And so uh, I love the organization we have as far as just who, who's in place, who's in place from Courtney Morgan as the general mm -hmm. manager on down. And then uh, uh, I love the, the, uh, the way our assistant coaches have embraced and just been all in. Uh, it's been, it's not a surprise because it's who they were yeah. when they were at their places before they came here. Yeah, it's amazing. You blended the staff and it feels like you guys have been together forever. Mm -hmm. One more, and, and Saturday won't be a, a football game like it'll be in the fall, but it's still, it's gonna be a game. Yeah. Fans are gonna be here in large numbers. What do you think that's gonna feel like for you leading yeah. that team out? And, and, and you know, what are your expectations in terms of what you'd like to see get accomplished in, a, yeah. in a, what really is a scrimmage, but it's gonna feel like a game. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. It's uh, gonna be a great day uh, for just everyone to come together, celebrate Alabama football. Um, you know, the way I look at it, and this is the coach come out in me, uh, is, you know, this is a practice 15. <laughs> you know, we need to get better practice 15. Uh, but I also wanna, you know, hopefully have the times where you can see and highlight, you know, highlight guys, highlight sides of the ball, highlight position groups that uh, go out there and, and, and do some awesome things. And I hope uh, there's some oohs and ahs, you know, that uh, are had. Um, and first, and then first and foremost, I really hope we get out of it and we're healthy. Uh, that's that's the big deal, so it can transition to, you know, the summer and our continued growth as a team.